My name is Kalia Slehot. My government name is Amy George. Palliative care. I think palliative care is really important. Uh, it's like um, a scientific name on it. But there was there was ways that we took care of people on the way out to go home. Uh, my grandmother, um, Christine Jack, my mo mom's mother, she's from the Mission Reserve Squamish Band. And if someone was sick and ready to, to leave the world, they'd call her. And she'd go to their house and uh, just prepare them. Uh, she, Once they died, she take my mom with her. My mom told me this story about herself. <laughs> She's um, she was really really scared of um, well bodies. <laughs> my mom and her mother went in the in the room where the body was, and she stood on the back of the couch, and she was right against the wall, and she looked behind to see what her mom was doing, and her mom went broke an arm on her leg and my mom almost fainted and <laughs> she got so frightened and then my grandmother would bath them and put on all their good clothes and then walking home um, my mom was so ter terrorized she my grandmother used to always wear a shawl so she'd go under her shawl and she'd have to walk the same footsteps as her mom on her way home and she goes, you broke that guy's arm. She, she says, I couldn't get his arm in the sleeve, so I had to. He has to wear those new clothes. Um, back in the day, we raised our the bodies of our loved ones into the tree. And there'd be just a little wooden structure and they'd sit with their legs up and then they'd put all of their favorite things around them, things that they owned, and then raise them up into the tree. And my mom was telling me that she said there was a certain spot they used to go where it was really bad smell. They'd know, she'd know when she's coming across it, she'd go under her sweater because that, 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 it really smelled bad. And I was saying, I asked her why, and she said that that's where they put them in the trees. So my mom saw the tail end of that. I told my kids, put me in a tree when I die. <laughs> the way we did, um, there used to be real strict rules in hospitals, like family couldn't go in and. We couldn't be with our loved one. And a lot of times they ask to go home. Even when they're really, really sick and in pain, they ask to go home. So they, what happens is um, they're a, a, in a familiar place with their loved ones around them. That's better than in a cold, a cold room in the hospital. I feel so bad for our people who have pa passed from COVID and that no one could be with them. Although, my dad, when he passed, he was in Lionsgate Hospital to get a eye surgery. And he chose, he chose his time and place. He said, I don't want you all crying around my bed. I just want to be peaceful when I go home. Um, and he went about three in the morning or something. And then the hospital phoned um, my older sister and told her that he, he passed. So he had his wish. He just, it was his wish to be by himself, but my mom wanted uh, everybody around her. And she said to us, I never saw so many sad faces and you're all crying she said if you could only see where i'm going you'd be happy for me you'd be laughing you'd be so happy for me uh -oh. 
there are different ways that people need to go in, even with funeral arrangements after. It's always our way to go according to what the family wants, according to what they wanted. Sometimes they, they specifically say who they want to carry them and um, who's going to, to like run the funeral. Because we have, it's almost a week long. It, COVID been so weird. Um, when someone passes, we all gather at the gym and everybody brings uh, potluck food. You bring something and we eat and stay with the family. And then when the body comes at three, um, every, the, the family gathers around them. And then around seven, uh, that's like a, a ceremony um, for the wake. And people get up and talk or sing, group sing, whatever. And some people stay with them all night. They're never alone. And then the next day is the funeral and people start gathering in it, around them again. And then so many people want to, want to pack them too to their final resting place. It's one of the last things you do for your loved one is when you pack them to their final resting place. And, and sometimes they pick them and sometimes they're just named. Um, I had a nephew pass where he was so excellent at sports that all the teams you ever played with came and they all wanted to be honored to be the one to pack them to, to the graveyard. We, we closed both ends of the reserve for traffic. Um, even with that, even with something so sensitive, people start getting mad in their car. They want to go through the reserve and they they get real impatient. I mean, where's your, I feel like asking, where's your humanity? Um, some people, um, when my brother-in-law passed, we were all, we were all with him and we all said words to him. Um, some other ones we sang all, all our songs. We'd sing our songs. Um, that must feel so good. Um, I've been with another nephew where, where they said, uh, I think it's time because uh, my mom came in first and then a whole, whole bunch of our, our family um, we're coming. They always come from the east. She come in and they're all waiting for him. So according to our own, our people, we never, never, never go alone. Even if we're by ourselves and there's no family or human beings with us. The, our relatives, our spirit relatives uh, come, come for us. And it's nothing to be feared. Uh, because we're so taken care of. And they say it's the same, almost the same journey as when, when you're born and you're coming in, into the light from being inside the womb and you're coming into the light. Sometimes it's a struggle, sometimes it's very easy. Every Everyone is different and it's sort of like that. So I remember my mom, she used to say, I pray that I'll just go to sleep. I don't want to suffer or get scared or wonder where I'm going. She said, I just want to, I just want to go to sleep. And she got her wishes. I was with her mom when she passed and she was joking and talking and um, so unafraid. She knew where she was going and who's coming for her, everything. She was talking to them to them, the ones that come for her. And it's like going to, opening the door and going into the, into the next world where there's no pain, no hurt. Um, I've been, my mom, my dad, um, 
my son's father, my daughter's father, all my brothers and sisters have, have gone home and I'm here by myself. I feel like that sometime. I'm so glad about my children and grandchildren. It's very, it's lonely sometime. I, I miss them. I miss my sister. It seems real recent. I think it's two years now. Two years now. It seems really recent. Yeah. I think when I go, I want my whole family there singing our songs. I'm not going to be like my dad and just be in the hospital and just say, I want to be by myself. Because he said that when you're coming to the world, that's a very private, um, private thing with yourself and your mother. Um, and when I go, I want to... Uh, go by myself in a dignified way without you all crying around me, <laughs> which we did do. Uh, I would have done that. I was begging him to stay. <laughs> but he, he chose, chose his own way, so you have to respect that. The last thing you can do is do what they want or what they directed you to do and it's one of the last things you'll do for them in this world so it's so important to listen to your your loved one when on their way out send them home in a good way I think that's what I want could see my name is uh, Watsuk that's my ancestral name and my uh, slave name is James Joseph George, what the white man gave me. Eh? Yeah, back yeah when I was when I was younger back in and I was a teenager and everything, when somebody would pass away, excuse me, they would uh, you know they would bring the the body into the uh, into your house, into the where they lived eh? and they they'd uh, keep me there for four days. And four nights, and then then they'd bring them to the church for a church ceremony. But a lot of our, a lot of our, a lot of our people, you know, they belong to what we call Sion, and they'd have uh, no Swaihui. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> I'm getting mixed. This they belong to Swaihui, and that's a different. Uh, uh, that's a mask dancer. And they'd, uh, when they'd pass before they brought them to church, they'd, that morning, the day of the morning, they were going to bring them into the church. They'd have a swaihuai's ceremony for them, you know, and just to, that was one way of letting them know that they were sending them off in, into their, to their new home. And, uh, and that's, there's so much of our culture that, you know, I, I don't even know that if I would have listened only when I was a young kid, I'd, I'd know a lot more than I do today. And when you do that, it, it really helps. Like, you know, like I said, you know, we didn't have mortuaries or anything. Our, uh, our grandmothers were the ones that would look after the bodies and all get them prepared for for their journey home. And uh, that's the way we, they used to do it way back then. We didn't, you know, but today we yeah, end up in the mortuary and I, I don't, you know, I don't believe in them. I always say you bring them home, you know, from the mortuary, you put them in their house and you stay there for four days and four nights with them. And uh, then you take them uh, and do the ceremony and then you take them up to the graveyard. But uh, that's not done anymore. Uh, I think the last time I had it done was for my grandson. Uh, he he, he uh, passed away, he was only 21 years old. And uh, 
my daughter, you know, she asked me if I'd take, I said, I certainly would, you know, because she knows a, a bit of our culture. She doesn't know that much either, but, uh, you know, she understood why her son needed to be, be brought home. And I said, yes, we can do that. Yeah, I, I still believe in that today. Like when I go home, that's what I, I told my grandsons, I said, do you guys bring me home? And I guess they went to talk to their dad. Their dad said, yeah, I know what to do. He said, we know what to do for him. So that's the way I want to, when I go home, that's the way I, I, I want to be prepared for uh, the next, you know, when I cross over to the spirit world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, we don't we don't do those things anymore. We don't have, you know, our our grandmothers looking after us, get preparing us ready for for crossing over to the spirit world. That's a long that's a long time ago, and that's a it's a, a I wouldn't say it's a lost thing, but that's just the way it is. The way I used to see our, our our last journey when we used to send off our people, like I said, you know, we'd bring them home, and uh, they'd always bring uh, the the Swai dancers in to 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 help send them off to the next uh, to the spirit world, and uh, I. I remember once, I, I, I can't remember who it was that told me, but uh, in, our, in our way, we used to send them out in the canoe for a while, you know, we'd bring them out in the canoe, they'd, they'd put the blankets on them and, you know, get them all prepared, and then they, they'd bring them out into the, you know, send them out into the inlet, and... Uh, you know, I, I, that was one way that we used to do it in our traditions. Uh, I don't, I've never seen it happen that way. I, I, I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. That's why I say a lot of our traditions are lost. Uh, you know, the way we do it today, the, the way I, I see it done is they have a ceremony before they take them into the church to have their... And a lot of them today, they don't believe in the church, so they don't, they're not sent out, sent home that way. You know, they, uh, a lot of uh, our people, uh, they believe in the, uh, the uh, Shaker church. That That's another uh, way of, you know, that wasn't our way, that was another way that was brought through the uh, colonialists, say they brought that religion but that seems to be a, a more, more of our tradition, uh, doing it through the shaker and do, then doing it through the, the Christian way. And uh, so all those things that we used to do back then, we don't do them anymore. And like I said, we, they used to have a ceremony for us. They'd send us out and into the ocean, uh, out into the inlet. And let it, and do it that way. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, just bring me into your house or wherever you know, and let me uh, speak to you and you know. And I hope everything really goes good for you and our children. They are the most important people right now. Is our children.
ancestral name is Slochia. My English name is Andrea Alec. I'm the Director of Health and Wellness for Tsleil-Waututh Nation. I uh, started working in the community right out of nursing school over 20 years ago. And back in the day, I had the real honor and privilege of looking after a lot of our community members, particularly the elders. You know, that was an absolutely beautiful experience uh, for me, and it was really instrumental and building um, those foundations of how we go forward with a two-eyed seeing model of um, incorporating, uh, first of all, our traditional and cultural and spiritual practices as Indigenous people into um, providing Western services and, and what that looks like for our community members and particularly our staff. And um, through those very, very early stages, um, I was the one that particularly provided the care by myself. Uh, at that time, there was no palliative care um, program, and that was just something that I did as part of my job. And looking back on, you know, back during that time, um, you work with families, you work with individuals, you work with community and helping our individuals, no matter what age they were. I've worked with um, very young adults to elders um, through that process, that transitioning process from the physical uh, presence to a spiritual presence. And uh, really reflecting back on that is, is just um, such, such life lessons and very grounding. And I think the other piece to that is, you know, in a lot of the times that I spent with elders over the years of caring th for them, they always uh, carried themselves with um, such dignity and such grace. And one of the things that I found through that time and that process was they were always very concerned about um, you know, not, not exposing themselves or family to providing care, you know, even in those end stages, they were always very concerned about not putting people out um, and not having family, um, you know, care for them in the most intimate parts uh, because they didn't want to subject family members to that. And, and that's where, um, you know, my care came in, um, you know, in, in being a nurse and having that background. I was able to provide that level of care in, in those most intimate moments. And, and for me, it was um, really uh, transformative because when we look at, um, you know, honoring people in the very last stages of their life, it, it's a real honor to care for somebody in those most um, vulnerable times of their life. But I think the key is them allowing you to care for them um, is really an honor. And, you know, when you're that close to someone during that time, you you have a, a unspoken and a, and a different relationship. There's a different type of relationship that forms during that time. And um, this is why we have, uh, you know, put this video together and, and developed um, you know, what is really important to us and what are the messages that we want to relay to our community. It's talking about, um, you know, the history of our people and how we provided those uh, spaces for individuals when they were going home, um, their very last canoe journey, and how can we support that to the best of our ability. And uh, with that, you know, we do um, training uh, with, our, with our nurses that our staff and also with BCH to really work together and develop a collaborative relationship on what this looks like for our community. And uh, very happy to be a part of this um, process and initiating this process to ensure that, um, you know, in this, these times of reconciliation and uh, looking at what relationships are out there and how those relationships need to change. Um, you know, through the years of colonization, we we look at the history of Indian hospitals and the mistreatment of, of our Indigenous people. And, uh, you know, there's no better 
time, space, or place um, to look after our community members in our own community, and that's exactly what we've been working towards. And and um, and I will say that I'm very happy with where we're at right now. So I, I just want to um, end off with I'm, I'm just really happy and very honored that you know we have the voices of our elders that are captured here and and the teachings, the invaluable teachings that they share and the history that they bring forward and, and the power and the medicine of the words that they carry and the strength that they carry. I'm, I'm very honored to um, work with them and walk alongside them and learn from them and continue on my own journey. So with that, I, I thank you. Hearts up, Sam.